Hi. Um, thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, I'm Kem. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about the uh, status of embedded Linux on RIS-5. So um, RIS-5 is uh, a recent architecture, and um, there has been a lot of exciting stuff that has been happening um, in the community. And uh, essentially, um, I'll just cover a few of the, um, uh, what this architecture is about at a high level and uh, various projects, their upstream status, and uh, where things are currently uh, work on, in progress and where help is needed. So um, I think in the end, you can ask questions as we speak, or you can reserve your question towards the end. Um, and uh, so we'll hopefully at the end of the talk, you will have um, a lot of pointers. Uh, if you're interested in RISC V ecosystem, um, and you know you may be working on various things in embedded Linux, it could be the kernel, it could be tool chain, it could be other spaces, and I'm hoping that all of you will find something new and or something to look forward to in RISC V um, ecosystem. Um, so just a introduction. Um, it's called RISC V, and because it's the fifth. Um, iteration of a RISC ISA from uh, University of Berkeley. Um, it has 32-bit, 64-bit, and a 128-bit wide instruction set. As you can see, 128-bit uh, is basically a learning from you know, past industrial experience to have it reserved, even though there are no designs yet which are using 128-bit uh, wide instruction sets, but it's there. Um, Primarily, you will find 64-bit is by default the instruction set that is being used today. Um, and uh, there are certain embedded variants which are also using or are tending to use 32-bit, and we'll cover that a little bit more. It's a little endian by default. Um, and I pointed this uh, specifications link. So as we know, it is all open source, and you, we all can participate. At least we can look at the specifications. So I encourage you to go there um, and look for all the specs that has been uh, designed. Certain specs are still being discussed, and some specs are locked down, so they're available for implementation. And uh, so feel free to uh, look through, and if you have inputs, uh, there are mailing lists. You can participate, provide your inputs. It's all open. Um, so primarily you will see this um, RV32i, RV64i, and you know, all these conventions. Uh, so basically there is a core instruction set, and then there are extensions. Um, and they are denoted by these uh, letters here. And uh, for example, if you have an extension to implement uh, multiply division, it's, um, it will be denoted by M. Uh, atomic memory access is by A. Uh, floating point, similarly double floating point, and compressed. Um, and there is a, uh, a naming scheme to represent the ISA that you have in the end, and uh, there are also extensions uh, that actually, which can be non-standard, and uh, you would basically mark them with X. So there is this naming scheme that you would follow when you have a, a customized instruction set, because um, the idea behind is that you can enhance it the ways you want. Um, provided you build upon the core instruction set. Um, G, G is basically an abbreviation for general instruction set, and uh, it's actually a combination of these extensions added on top of the base ISA. So you would see that um, it's actually uh, expanding to RV64, IM, AFD. Um, so we'll talk about this more because this is generally what is being currently followed. Uh, for various software ports. So, um, so I'll uh, now give you a little detail on where the status is with respect to the various um, software in the ecosystem. Um, so the software is developing very fast for RISC-V. And what I'm going to talk today may be obsolete tomorrow. Um, and some of it is already is obsolete um, because a lot of upstreaming, so the effort is upstream first. 
this is a learning from various other architecture reports and that the RISC-V community has taken the step to basically make sure that all the basic support in tools, in kernel, everything is upstream first. This strategy is actually being followed by in community. And as a result, we have um, seen that a lot of the basic tool support, especially you need compilers and you know, a basic tool chain, a CC++ tool chain to do rest of the work, all that has landed now upstream. So in Binary Tools 228, um, we got the, uh, the RISC-5 64-bit support. GCC 7.0, <coughs> sorry, onwards we have the support. GLibc 227, earlier this year, uh, got the 64-bit port and then uh, the 228, which is uh, the recent release, will have the RV32 uh, port. New Lib 3.0, uh, which was also released um, earlier this year, it also has the uh, RISC-5 support. So New Lib is required if you're doing bare metal. Uh, so this is a C library you would use for uh, bootstrapping your tool chains. Um, Kimi is very important. It's a very important cog in the wheel uh, when you don't have real hardwares. And uh, 2.12 actually got the full support uh, for uh, emulator, um, for RISC-5, uh, VART emulator actually in, in uh, upstream. GDB uh, currently in 8.2, which was released very recently, uh, there is support for bare metal uh, that has been upstreamed. So if you are doing uh, microcontroller stuff, you can build all your tool chain upstream uh, from, um, from various upstream releases. And uh, uh, for Linux, actually, uh, there is a fork that we have currently on RISC5.org, uh, github.com slash RISC5. And you'll see there are lots of um, uh, folks there. And GDB is also one of those folks that we use. Um, now, hopefully, this is being upstreamed you know, as soon as, and maybe next time when we meet, it will be all upstream. Um, bootloaders, Core Boot actually got its support very early on in 2016, I believe. Um, all the support for RISC-V was upstream. Uh, U-Boot has recently um, accepted the uh, VERT board support uh, upstream. And, uh, and the proxy kernel and the Berkeley bootloader are actually the uh, original bootstrap uh, bootloaders for uh, you know, RISC-V um, spike platform. They are, in a way, used even to um, bootstrap the, kernel, the Linux kernel right now. They already were upstream, and they are already available on the uh, RISC-5 GitHub. Uh, so with kernel, uh, 4.15 was the first time when it got, you know, first user space ABI changes um, into kernel and the basic support. Uh, drivers were not all there, and since then, it has been trickling slowly. And uh, 4.19, which was released recently, uh, actually contains the drivers for Cumul, uh, word board. So you can build um, the kernel from upstream and it will boot on Cumul if you uh, use the word board as an emulation platform. So um, there are major contributions that happened from Berkeley and Sci5 and Andes uh, to do all this. Uh, great upstreaming work over the past few years. Um, so now moving on to other operating systems. Um, these are kind of like the, you know, the basic high level uh, components that we have that you would require to bootstrap other softwares. And uh, Zephyr is actually one of the RTOSs that uh, is hosted on the Linux Foundation. And um, um, it was one of the first RTOSs that got ported to uh, RISC-5. And there is a Sci-5 High 5 one board, um, which basically was the initial target along with the um, uh, QMU uh, emulation for RISC-V32. Uh, and then since then, there have been a few more boards that has been added. Um, so 1.13 was the first release for uh, Zephyr upstream that got the RISC-V port. Um, so now if you download a standard Zephyr release um, SDK, you would find RISC-V support is by default in there. It is one of the uh, 
uh, supported architectures. So uh, distribution ports, so moving on to um, primarily the Linux ecosystem distributions, uh, there are a few things here. Uh, for example, there is a uh, understanding. Um, so uh, most of you might have attended the, this morning's talk about uh, RISC-V um, org. Um, and so there has been an understanding. So this um, organization basically is there to steer some standardization effort, efforts around RISC-V. And uh, there is an understanding with all the distributions and um, um, RISC-Vs to basically adopt um, RV64GC as the general ISA. Because we talked about there are so many variants that are out there, but this will be a generic um, binary distributions could use and it's a uh, understood or it's a agreed upon uh, ABI to be used. So um, a portable software can be written. Um, so you'd see there is RV64G and C. C stands for compressed instructions. Um, those of you familiar with ARM or MIPS, you know, these are the thumb equivalent of ARM instruction and MIPS 16 equivalent of um, MIPS ISA. Um, and uh, these are by default. So you, know, you can get uh, best of both code compression, uh, code density, and performance. Um, the embedded Linux distributions, that will cover a few of those. They do have uh, RV32G port as well. That ABI variant is now come upcoming now that glibc port is upstream. Uh, we would see that you know, there are uh, distributions that are already now supporting that um, as a possibility. Um, I'm not expecting that in um, uh, desktop or server distributions to be the default, um, but embedded distributions and frameworks, they will still have these options. So if you're designing one of those boards, um, you, you might want to look at some of those infrastructures. Um, so, uh, Fedora has actually done a lot of uh, uh, initial heavy lifting, um, and they have actually a dedicated page up there now for which lists actually all instructions in detail, um, how you could install Fedora on RISC-5, or you can use a, uh, an image to bootstrap into an emulator. And um, um, so they were releasing certain uh, phases of bootstraps throughout last year. And uh, the final bootstrap was finished this year, earlier this year, which means that now RISC 5 is like any other architecture supported in, in Fedora. And uh, the Koji build form, which is the default build form for building the packages in Fedora, is actually churning out the RISC 5 for RPMs like uh, other architectures. And um, um, you can see Fedora 29 and Rawhide, which is their um, kind of like the bleeding edge Fedora. They, all the packages in there, they are now, uh, they have moved over to build using their standard Koji build system, which is a, a great achievement for uh, RISC 5 within a few years uh, to be one of uh, the main supported architectures over there. Uh, currently, it supports uh, the Hi5 Unleashed board from, uh, from Sci5 um, and also the QEMU, which is emulator. So you could have images installed either, either on QEMU or also on the Hi5 Unleashed board. Um, Debian is, has also done a lot of um, uh, work, and I'm just pointing to the top of that wiki. I encourage you to go there, read about it. Um, I've included this one uh, slide here, uh, one graph here, that is from, um, from Debian uh, packages, how many packages are, how many percentage of packages are building for various architectures. And um, it's not a very high definition here, but um, as you can see, RIS-5 is somewhere, you know, hovering around along with X32. Um, so not bad, actually, you know, it's, uh, it has left behind several other architectures uh, that uh, has been around for, for a long time. 
So what this tells us is, um, you know, the, the porting effort is actually uh, ongoing at an accelerated pace, and more and more packages are being ported um, as, uh, as we move into 2019. Um, and that's uh, actually a great sign. Uh, Fedora does have, um, I think the cross-build system currently does have few um, caveats there, uh, so it doesn't have the, um, uh, the tool chains building for cross-build system as of yet, I think there, but they do have a, a way to do it, and they have documented it really well on this wiki page. I tried it, it works. So if you are working with Debian, um, you know, you are uh, no less behind any other distribution if you are consider <coughs> considering RISC V. They do publish um, images, uh, which are actually from assigned developer. Um, minimal images are there, and then you can bootstrap your system from there on. Uh, the standard ISOs are not there yet. Open embedded. So um, I'm also an open embedded developer. So um, I've been involved in doing port on open embedded quite a bit. So I can give you some information on open embedded as well. Um, it was one of uh, the initial distributions that was actually being uh, ported to run on RIS-5. Um, back in those days, you didn't have QMU. You had the spike. Uh, emulator, uh, which is actually a spike simulator, very slow, but very good for, you know, uh, accuracy and hardware simulation. Um, it was sort of a fork, and it never merged back for a few years until uh, last year when we started to work on it to upstream all those changes. So a lot of work was already done there. Um, and so we started for, um, uh, uh, upstreaming all this, uh, all the um, all the work from uh, the fork into upstream, and because the way open embedded is organized, we could actually create a separate layer, and then we could use the forks like glibc fork and gcc fork and pinnitles fork and everything, uh, and then take all the core changes and still bring them to the core, but have the tool chain bootstrapped from a separate layer. Um, so that kind of helped to, uh, to do the, the upstreaming effort fairly early on while you know, other distributions were probably doing some work but primarily were pushing the changes upstream. And eventually today, you know, after uh, like, you know, the 2.6 release, which is gonna happen, um, there is actually, uh, all the core changes are upstream. There are hardly any changes that we are carrying in that layer, except the BSP layer changes, which basically um, defines, you know, meta RIS-5 related uh, tunings and options and machine definitions and things like that. Um, other things are already upstream. So um, currently it does, it supports um, uh, emulator and it supports the Sci-Fi Freedom um, U540 board, you know, uh, and you could also build the um, cross SDK. So you know the, the power of open embedded is that you can build so many artifacts to do different kind of developments. So you could build a, a cross SDK if you're building things in a cross environment, or you could build a on device SDK, which means you build an image which has all the tools and everything in it. You boot it on emulator or you boot it on, um, on the freedom board and you can develop your software. So uh, this is uh, currently working really well. And uh, you could also generate bare metal RB32 um, SDKs. So we talked about Zephyr, and um, uh, the bare metal SDKs are useful actually there, and the, the SDKs that uh, Zephyr project is generating actually is using open embedded Yocta project to do the SDK work. So, uh, Currently, the 32-bit tuning, especially from the bare metal perspective, that's in there. And the RV64 for a hosted environment like Linux uh, is also in there. Um, so currently, actually, we are also um, working on trying to add continuous integration. Um, so we can kind of run 
um, builds on when people submit patches against MetaRis 5, for example. We have few challenges there in terms of because the build times are too long. So we have to have a dedicated CI loop somewhere and so we're still figuring that out. Um, we do have um, the infrastructure in place. We don't have machines to run it uh, as of now. So hopefully we'll figure out something by um, you know, next time. Uh, so uh, Open Embedded builds a whole lot of packages, cross-build packages, and as you can see, um, we run through the world builds almost um, a few day, maybe three days a week. And um, currently there are a few packages which are failing. Um, obviously, you know, the reason being they haven't been netported, um, or there are other um, compile related problems or other issues in there, but um, um, if you consider out of um, 8,000, 9,000 packages, 38 failures, you know, is not that bad uh, as far as I, I'm concerned. But uh, there is uh, uh, some work to be done in there, especially like, you know, supporting GStreamer and uh, some of the key packages that are currently not compiling. So, um, so this is a snapshot from the, uh, we could run tests actually in a cross environment. Uh, in, in Yocto, so basically when you have um, a package change, it can actually run um, the full test run in, in an emulator. So uh, that is also currently working for RIS-5 um, emulator. And uh, currently we have failures in um, XORG test as, uh, as of uh, recent, so we need to look at those, but um, uh, there are several other tests that we want to enable on those, so you can have a lot more auto tests that are then happening um, automatically. Build root, uh, actually, build root has done a great job of uh, putting um, the uh, changes recently. I think the 64-bit um, port went in; uh, it was accepted, um, and. Uh, there was this uh, fork we had on RIS-5, um, GitHub handle, um, and the RIS-5 start branch actually describes how to build build root for 64-bit emulator. Um, and uh, very recently, as of I think yesterday or day before, the 32-bit port was submitted for Linux to build root. So actually that's a great news as well. And um, um, there is also a, a article actually that is published, and I think you can find the links over there uh, to that article, which describes the step-by-step -step procedure if you want to build, you know, the build route for um, RIS-5. So, if you are a build route user, go ahead and try it out, and um, you know, interact on the mailing lists if you uh, find issues. Um, just the build route mailing list should be able to help you out. So uh, now on to some of the ongoing efforts. Um, RIS-5 LLVM, actually um, most of the support is upstream. So you can build actually a LLVM compiler, uh, but then there are few patches, few features that are still in there that are still being upstreamed. So, um, if you go into this repository, it lists actually all the patches that are being rebased um, and then being sent upstream for review and merge. So um, I think the base support is being there is a big step. Um, so these are basically enabling other um, features that actually is um, a more of incremental changes that are gonna go in there. So that's the great news. And um, similarly, the LLD is the uh, uh, LLVM linker, and that port actually has been also submitted upstream. Um, I'm not uh, up to date as to whether that has been accepted yet or it's still under discussion. Um, Muscle, uh, Muscle is another C, embedded C library. Um, and it has been ported to RISC-5 and um, it has been actually rec recently submitted upstream as well. And you can uh, see the discussions or basically it is planned for the next release. There are a few um, uh, discussions currently happening between the developers and uh, before it gets submitted, but I'm hopeful that very soon 
uh, we will have the muscle support as well upstream. So what this means is that we will have um, an embedded library along with glibc, and um, uh, this will also make sure that you know, we have um, um, a projects like OpenWRT actually be able to build um, from upstream. Um, OpenWRT does have a port, by the way, for RISC-V. For, um, for, I couldn't cover all that here, but um, even the OpenWRT port is already published and they have submitted the port um, completion uh, emails to the RISC-V mailing list, so that's also a great news. Open OCD, so uh, moving on to some of the JTAG stuff, if you are doing um, embedded uh, development, um, there is a risk five out of three support. It hasn't been upstreamed, so um, um, the but the port kind of worked, um, and it probably might need some uh, refinement if uh, it needs to be submitted upstream. Um, and I think that will be uh, something that I think um, some of the open OCD efforts would take over. But uh, if people here are interested, you know, there is. Uh, room for improvement there. Uh, the Linux OS port or the Linux application GDB port, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, is not upstream yet. It's available on the fork though. And um, so uh, in due course, I think that's also gonna go upstream. Um, similarly, there is uh, UFI. I think uh, the standards body has accepted um, there is five into 2.7, I believe, uh, version of the specs. And uh, there is some work in Grub, V8, Node.js. I think uh, all of these, there are uh, all the ports are available on some of these ports are already available on RIS-5 uh, handle. And in some cases, they are fully functional ports. In some cases, they may be uh, done on a previous version of a package and you know it needs to be first forward ported and then upstreamed. Um, similar for Golang and others uh, are also in the same category. So contributions. So I did this little um, uh, search and on Linux kernel. So you can do some git uh, munging there to find out the unique contributors. And as you can see in 4.18, RISC-5 shows 31 contributors. So uh, we need to take this number up. So, you know, please join. And uh, start hacking on RISC-5 and submitting more and more patches. Hopefully, you know, this number will go up rapidly and we'll have a lot more uh, to report next time. Um, so if you want to find out more, um, it's a very good page that is uh, maintained actually on RISC-5R. And a uh, lot of stuff that I have here is also reflected over there in different form. So please check there all the time. Um, that page keeps updating as and when the upstream effort is going on and things are moving upstream. Um, there are also a page for you know, various RISC-5 cores because several people are designing cores based on RISC-5, so this page is very um, important and very interesting from that aspect that you want to uh, know more about you know, who all are designing RISC-5 cores and what's available for you to use. Um, go in there and uh, uh, yeah, check for this. So, um, so Linux kernel actually has a separate mailing list now. Uh, it's called Linux uh, RISC-5. Um, so if you have uh, discussions around RISC-5, want to participate, um, use that mailing list. So um, there are more things, more ways you could uh, get involved. So there is still standards work happening. You would see that the specs are being discussed and proposed and finalized. ABI, for example, the uh, embedded ABI is still under works. Um, and um, so you, know, you could influence and provide your inputs there. Um, and uh, we could improve you know, the Linux distribution port. So I covered a few of those. Um, there are more that, can be, that are being worked on to be forward ported. And then the existing uh, ports, for example, can do better. There are um, loose 
and so that you know you could support uh, uh, to 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 be fixed in the distributions that are already supporting it, and uh, port more software packages to these five. So you know if you are maintaining a package or using or developing a package that is uh, not yet ported to RIS-5, go ahead. Um, you could basically, currently you have everything to, to start pack, porting those packages um, to RIS-5. Most of the software is upstream, right? So you really don't need forks. Um, upstream first strategy is actually core to the RIS-5 software development community. And, uh, most of the software you, that's already upstream, you can participate as usual. If you have a GCC patch, participate in GCC community. LLVM, participate in LLVM community. There is no specific involvement from uh, RISC V community that you need to have. You might want to CC them, that's fine, but uh, most of these discussions are now taken upstream, like any other architecture. Um, so there are specifics under GitHub RISC V handle. So these are uh, some of the in progress ports. So if you see a fork of something there, then you know that it is in progress. And some of the projects are actually upstream there itself. For example, you know, uh, some of the projects I mentioned over there, like the architecture layer for open embedded or the BBL and uh, all those, uh, and Spike, for example, they are, those are basically the upstreams for those. So there's a software discussion mailing list. Feel free to join that. And RISC V on Freenode, actually, it's a channel available if you're on IRC. And there's a Stack Overflow tag as well um, that you could use. Um, there is a buff today, actually. So uh, at six o'clock, um, and this is hosted by um, the folks from RIS-5 uh, and Sci-5 and, and Western Digital who are actually at the forefront of RIS-5 architecture today in terms of hardware and software. So if you want to learn more uh, in depth, you know, some of um, other stuff that you have questions for, I encourage you to go there. They are very knowledgeable people. Um, and they'll give you like, you know, the, uh, the latest um, and details that you might be seeking seeking for. So um, I just want to leave with this parting thought before I end and then open for questions. Seeds of change. So um, some so many years ago, you know, there was this mail that was sent, which was describing I wrote this small OS, and then you know you want to play around with it. Please go ahead. And today, that project is 22 million lines code, 14K plus contributors, and it's actually the most successful open source software project. The key is open source, right? So in the software world, it did change the paradigm of software, how people thought about doing software. And all of you who are sitting here are actually um, the people who made this happen. So, I believe that history tends to repeat. Well, usually when we forget it, but this time to build upon some proven efforts that we have taken in the past. So this could be uh, history repeating for hardware, a open source hardware. So with this, thank you very much for listening to me. And uh, so if there are any questions, I'm open for those. Yes. Is it microcoded? Yeah. Um, so I actually don't have much information into this area, but um, it's a ASIC, it's a, a CPU implementation um, that is based on RISC-V. I'm not sure if it is microcoded though, it's a pure design, yeah. Paul might have more details. No, it's just not, it's based on rocket chips. So 
the rocket ship is all open source and still on GitHub? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, have you tried, regarding the Yoxel Open Embedded Build, have you tried building the SDK with New Lib? Uh, so question is, have you tried building you know, open embedded SDK with new lib? Uh, the answer is no. We haven't yet tried it. Um, well, in a way, yes. So um, we've tried the bare metal builds for open embedded. That did not use new lib as per se as a library, but it used it to bootstrap it. So in a way, yes, but uh, the new ways that you probably think where we add new lib as a library option, that hasn't been a Used. So it has been used just to bootstrap it. Okay. Yeah, because um, um, it's primarily done for Zephyr, and Zephyr doesn't need any libc. They have their own. Yes, sir. How much is the development cost? <laughs> so c can you repeat your question? Uh, so development box costs uh, uh, just below $1,000. Um, but keep in mind, it's a very high-end board, um, and it's first of its kind, right? So um, it's just going to go down as we kind of like have more iterations of those boards. And um, currently, I think um, it might be a little on the higher end of the pricing. And uh, I'm hopeful that, you know, there are more boards coming, which will be basically affordable. And I see that happening very soon. More questions? OK. So going once, twice. No more questions? OK, thank you. Sold. Thank you very much.